Yo, 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 yo. <clears throat> it's Tuesday. A little bit after four. You know what that means. It's time for life and basketball. Life and basketball. So how's everybody doing today? How was everybody extra long weekend? Hope y'all enjoyed yourself. Hope it was all good. Sitting, waiting, let Facebook do its thing, let IG do its thing. Why well, drink on this green thing? Um, let me know you're here, man. Let me know you're here. I need more participation from those that are watching. I need more people to share that are watching. We're going to really jump off into it today. And I hope to hit some points in each and every person that watches this today. That's why you need to share it. So we got two more days before the final start, I believe. Um, I'm going to say it here. I'm going to say it now. Um, I think Cleveland will win. I think Cleveland will win. I think it's just in the cards. Um, again, it's all entertainment, but I think Cleveland will win. Um, maybe in six or seven. I think game one is going to be pivotal. Game one is going to be really, really important. Um, <clears throat> it's going to be a lot of pressure on Durant. Not sure if he's going to be able to step up to the challenge. And um, meet the expectations. He might not play bad, but it's going to be a lot of pressure on KD. And I uh, don't really see what he made out of in this finals. All right, so if you're on Facebook joining me, all right, just give me a, give me a like, give me a heart. Uh, just let me know, you know, who's all on with me. Don't be hiding behind the bushes. There's so many people do, but I'm going to take care of that today. So anyway, as you know, I'm Carvel Bailey. I'm the CEO of Blessed the Ball Skill Development Academy, where we are a year-round skill development company. What skills do we deal with? We deal with physical, mental, um, emotional, social, spiritual, um, cognitive. We deal with all of those skills because you have to have skills to be able to do and maintain all those things. We do deal with all those skills and we use basketball as our vehicle to move people along. <clears throat> all right. Um, we are damn good at what we do. Um, it's, it's, it's about that time for me personally to stop being bashful, stop being humble. We damn good. And you need to get with us. Um, if you want to improve in life, want to improve in basketball, you need to get with us. You need to tell people about us because uh, we have a track record of being successful. And that's because we put in the work, we study, um, and we mean well. We know exactly what it is that we want to do to be able to reach those that we're attempting to work with. We understand what it means um, to need help and to want help and to be helped. Um, and so this show, Life and Basketball, it is to bring together just that, life and basketball, to show you how they correlate with each other, um, how they bridge together, uh, all sports. But on this show, we're talking basketball. Everything that you see on a basketball court can be related to a, a life skill or real life teaching moment. Um, anything in life most times can be converted back to um, some form of um, basketball uh, skill or real life situation, you know, basketball situation. So what we always do on this show is we jump off from this book here, Understanding Life Through the Game of Basketball. Listen, people, let me get real close so that everybody understands. <clears throat> this book is not a book to tell you how to play basketball. All right, I get this question so many times look and read it what it says, okay? It's a guide to effective leadership and coaching. 
It's a guide to effective leadership and coaching. That means that it's going to help you be a better leader and a coach, no matter what it is, life coach, athletic coach, teacher, um, leader, whatever it is that you do, however you lead people. This is the book to help you along the way to get give you strategies and some better understanding of it. So no, it is not just a book, or it's not even a book. Excuse me, we don't talk about running no play, no press, no scheme. Not this book. That book is coming. Okay, and I I I I thank you all for maybe wanting it, but it's coming. But this is not this that book. This is the book for everybody. But if you read the title slowly, understanding life, understanding life through the game of basketball. So that's why we do this show to get you to understand that the book is basically the show, but more detail. The book is the show, more detail. So today, as always, we jump off from the book to get you to understand uh, some of the things that we're putting in a book so that you can have a better uh, grabs and glimpse of what we do, uh, what, what I talk about in this book. So today we're talking about the pyramid of success. Okay, the pyramid of success is a principle that the legendary UCLA coach John Wooden put in place for himself that he used with all of his teams. And so I'm going to briefly read about two paragraphs, maybe three, and then we're going to jump off into it from there. Okay. Again, share this information. Share this information. The Pyramid of Success. It is derived from the self-made definition of success that Coach John Wooden indoctrinated. Again, for those that was with us last week or wasn't with us last week, we talked about John Wood's definition of success. Those the ones that were with us last week, I will reiterate it again. Success is peace of mind, which is a direct result of self-satisfaction and knowing that you made the effort to do your best to become the best that you are capable of becoming. Peace of mind, which is a direct result of self-satisfaction and knowing that you made the effort to do your best to become the best that you are capable of becoming. He derived a set of rules and skills to follow as a means to get to the ultimate end. In my research of the pyramid, I see the left side of it, ambition, adapt, adapt, uh, adaptability, resourcefulness, fight, and faith. Adaptability, okay? Ambition, adaptability, resourcefulness, fight, and faith was about the outer core of the body. While the right side of it, sincerity, honesty, reliability, integrity, and patience was about the inner core of the soul. So you, you, you see ambition, resourcefulness, Fight, faith, and adaptability. I don't know why I can't say that today, okay? Those are the outer core of the body. While sincerity, honesty, reliability, integrity, and patience are about the inner core of the soul. The pyramid has a base, which is the bottom, that has to be solid in its foundation before it can be built upon. Industrialness, friendship, loyalty, cooperation, and enthusiasm are major components of building any team, company, or program. So the base, what is built upon, industrialness, friendship, loyalty, cooperation, enthusiasm are all major components of building any team, company, or program. If one is not capable of working hard, being loyal to their work, be not only cooperative, but friendly with, and to those they may have to collaborate with and truly enjoy all of the above, they may not be as successful as they should. 
I'm going to read that again. If one is not capable of working hard, being loyal to their work, be not only cooperative, but friendly with and to those that they may have to collaborate with, not compete with, but collaborate with, and truly enjoy all of the above, they may not be as successful as they should. Once all of these are achieved, next you can build on self-control, alertness, initiative, and intentness. As a player, coach, business person, must have discipline and common sense to be observant yet open-minded individual, yet an open-minded individual. Along with the ability to be open-minded and disciplined, they may have to take responsibility to make decisions on their own based of what they have learned prior to the event occurring. They also have to be persistent and determined to get to their expected end. So this passage said a lot. All right. We talked about if you're capable of working hard, you have to be able to cooperate with people. You have to know things that you're trying to do, you have to have self-control, you have to be alert, you have to have initiative and intentness. What is your intent for being a leader? What is your intent for being a leader? Do you have self-control or do you just fly off the handle? Sometimes flying off the handle may be necessary to get people to understand your point. But sometimes when people fly off the handle, they don't be alert. Like they black out. So can you be alert? Can you have self-control? Can you take initiative to be able to do the things done that leaders have to do when no one else want to do them? When everybody else sitting around and you told somebody one, two, three, four times, you know, you told your players that this needs to be done or your managers or your assistant coaches, can you have the initiative to be able to do it? But it talks about be not only cooperative, but friendly with those you may have to collaborate with and truly enjoy all of the above. If you can't do that, they may not be as successful as they should. So everybody want to be successful. And again, for those that may have just joined us, this is an excerpt from my book, Understanding Life Through the Game of Basketball. Okay. Put it close as you can see it. A guide, a guide to effective leadership and coaching. So we talk about the pyramid of success, and it has a right side, a left side, all right, body, soul, and then the base is foundation. So when you're thinking of a pyramid, right, the rock, right, jigger, right, the left, the left side, the right side, and then the base. The base has to be strong. The base has to be strong. And then the left and the right side have to come together, body and soul, have to come together to make a strong standing monument. So you have to be able to stand on good principles when you want to be a leader. You have to be able to stand for something, whether they say you'll fall for anything. Now, again, sometimes as leaders, you may have to go outside of your norm to get people to understand that you're serious. But you have to be consistent and you have to be enthused as well as be knowledgeable about what it is that you talk about. But see, for, for, for so long, I think a lot of times a, a lot of problems that a lot of leaders have is that people just may not believe in them. And people may not believe in them based off misconception that they may have. Or they may not believe in them based off who the person used to be. I know all great leaders were even better followers. So for those that's in this on this live right now or that's watching it, I want you to think about when you were a follower, okay, when 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 you were 
I don't want to use the word subservient, but I just did, right? When when you had somebody that you had to answer to, and, and we all still do, what makes you look at them and say, I want to follow that person? Or I believe in that person. I know they're telling me right. I know they're steering me right. Like, do they have good values and morals and integrity and character? You know, we talk about part of the the body. Do they have, you know, resourcefulness and, and industriousness? You know, the things that, you know, you have to have in your inner loins, in your body, in your soul that pushes you past those points when you don't want to do things anymore. So what made you want to run through that wall, like we talked about last week, what made you want to run through that wall for the person that's leading you? And if you don't want to, why don't you? See, sometimes if we can look at ourselves and reverse roles as leaders, if we can look at ourselves as the student instead of the teacher, it help us be better teachers. That's why I said that all great leaders were even better followers. And it don't mean, yeah, I'm going to just follow you, right? Duh, duh. No. But I can be effective in taking, you know, following your lead and doing the things that is necessary. Then I, it'll help me and I can learn what to do and what not to do when I become a leader. So now once I'm a leader, I kind of know, okay, what were some of the things that turned me on? What were some of the things that turned me off based on my leader? And are we doing that? So I don't know. Even as parents, do we do that? Do we understand some of the things that made us, you know, want to follow our parents? gun ho as opposed to some of the times when we just didn't. Does that make us better parents? So, you know, really getting into the pyramid. All right. With, with those three sides, the left, right, and the base, but really to talk about if we don't collaborate with people, we can't be as successful as we want to be. All great leaders, all great companies, all great teams have understood that they've had to give of themselves and work with someone else and collaborate. Because again, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. So that's going to bring me to my three points. Collaboration and longevity. Because it goes hand in hand. And longevity, you know, you go for a long time and you can sustain for a long time. So me saying that, I'm starting with my first because this is where I'm from. Chicago. All right, let's look at the collaboration Post basketball or baseball. And I'm saying that because I always say those people that know me I always say it's a difference in Michael Jordan before baseball, Michael Jordan after baseball. It's always a difference. He was a he was more direct or or more Yeah, I would say more direct before baseball but he was more hungry and driven after baseball. And some people may think different. Some people may think he was more driven before baseball and more direct after baseball. But I say he was more direct before baseball because he'd get all in your face and, you know, like, you know, Mike didn't really take a lot of stuff. Little do people know. But after baseball, this dude was driven. 
he has something to prove all over again. But we talk about collaboration and we talk about longevity. Let's look at the 96 Bulls. Pull my mods down a little bit. Let's look at the 96, 97, 98 Bulls. One man, Dennis Rodman. When they had that press conference with Dennis Rodman, everybody was like, what the hell is going on? Dennis Rodman is coming to Chicago. You know, he had the little red and some hair. You know, a lot of people like, what? How the hell that's going to work? Like, he ain't, him and Pippen ain't going to get along, whatever. But Michael Jordan, the leader of that team, understood we have a job to do. We have a job to do. So Dennis can go with Madonna or whoever he wants to after the game. During the game, we working. And Dennis Rodman was so much of a consummate professional to where he understood it probably more than them dudes. Look, I'm coming here to win. I wouldn't even sign this contract if I didn't want to win. I understand what y'all got over here, and I want to play with y'all. So if y'all want me, let's collaborate and let's get it done. See, they weren't competing anymore, bad boys and the boys. They weren't competing anymore. They collaborated with Rodman, and they went on to have a dynasty. And we talk about longevity from Dennis Rodman's standpoint. It, it was longevity because they won more championships than the Pistons won. They won three. From the Bulls' standpoint, longevity, right? Michael Jordan won more games in those three years than he had won in any three prior years in a row. 72 and 10, I think they came back 69 or 67, 68, something like that. And they came back with another great year, the third year, even though it was, you know, wasn't, you know, they had some issues because they knew it was over. But they understood, let's collaborate. So who are we out here with that we're competing with that we need to be collaborating with? Instead of saying, man, you know, and I'm going to get all this money. Why not say, look, you know, in actuality, you're trying to get all the money. You're only going to get a little bit of money. Why not say, look, let me collaborate with this person, and we can go get much more than I would get by myself. But a lot of times what's happening is that we just go and try to get it all, and we wind up with just a tiny bit. Just a tiny bit. Go get it all. Collaborate. I can collaborate one, two, three, four people. But a lot of times we can't because you don't trust each other. A lot of times the reason we don't trust each other is because we're looking at ourselves. I don't trust them because I know what I would do. So a lot of times we impress our thought process on somebody else. And say this person will do that, or well, this is what this person is thinking, and that's all based off really what we're thinking. Man, they're gonna try to get over on me. Man, they're gonna try to get down on me, Joe. Man, they're gonna try to J down on me. Man, they're gonna, you know, whatever lingo you use, they're gonna try to pull a fast one, buddy. Whatever it is, we're thinking because of what we would probably do. So it ain't looking right. It ain't sitting right with us. Therefore, we don't want to collaborate. Won't work that way. It can't work. So understand we talk about collaboration. If you want to go far and go together, let's stop trying to go fast and go alone. Let's go far. Let's go far. All right, the second part that I want to talk about, my second point, I always have three points. My second point, I'm going to get through this real fast. My second point, talk about collaboration, all right, instead of competing, okay? We're going to talk about the 
New England Patriots. My team. New England Patriots, even though they didn't really compete all the time against like Randy Moss and, you know, when he was with Minnesota and all that, but when he figured I'm going to collaborate with these guys and I'm going to go over here, you know, they were undefeated. Tom Brady just needed somebody to throw it to. Now we're going to set all type of records. Yeah, they didn't go to the Super Bowl that year, but they was undefeated. So some may say it really didn't count, but it's the process of getting to our expected end. Now, I'm going to read the last part for you. It says, a player coach business a player, coach, or business person must have discipline and common sense, be an observant yet open-minded individual, along with the ability to be open-minded and disciplined. They have to take the responsibility to make decisions on their own based off what they have learned prior to the event occurring. Randy Moss knew what the 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 Patriots was prior to him coming. He did his homework. He understand. He understood. Then it says they also have to be persistent and determined to get to their ex expected end. Randy Moss was determined to get to that expected end. So are we determined to get to where we want to go? Sometimes we may think we determine, but we don't want to collaborate with nobody else. So therefore, we fold. We take our hand and we fold. Because we don't want to share our talents, treasures, skills, knowledge, whatever, with somebody else and to get their talents, treasures, skills, knowledge, and all of that and to be able to blow up. Little do people know, I'm going to give you a hit. Google owns YouTube. That's my third point. I'm going to say it again. Google, which is Alphabet, all right, they, uh, on the stock market, is, all right, you know, they call it Alphabet. But Google owns YouTube. So YouTube was nice and happening. Google was up and coming because remember, at, you know, those that remember like, you know, your phone used to, you know, you know, you have mail, you know, dial up and all of that before we got to high speed, right? <laughs> well, I'm maybe showing my age, right? Some of the new younger people have no idea what I'm talking about. But we used to use like Yahoo, you know, it was a Yahoo search engine like that was kind of the biggest one. And then, you know, we had Internet Explorer and all of those things way before, like Google Chrome and all that. But when so when Google first came out, everybody wasn't really using Google as a search engine. Most people were using, like, Yahoo as a search engine. Or if you had Hotmail, it was like MSN. You know, you, you, you would type that in. But then what happened was Google came about and people started using that as a search engine. But a lot of people didn't know, say, how to save it to their home page and to their desktop to where when you go in, it automatically goes to your search engine. You know, then things like Bing came up and all of those things. But we talk about collaborating, right? The first thing we talk about with Pyramid of Success was um, being, you know, the three pillars, body, soul, and a good foundation, right? But we talk about Chicago Bulls with Dennis Rodman being able to co collaborate to win three championships and be better than Dennis Rodman teams ever were and be better than Michael Jordan teams ever were. Those two had to collaborate. Then we talked about Randy Moss going to the Patriots, Right, and he had to collaborate 
with Tom Brady and them. He had to do his homework to know about them beforehand. And then he was persistent to get to his expected end. Then the last collaboration that we're talking about, because life and basketball, right? Get your basketball or even get your football one. Now I'm giving you a life one. Google owns YouTube. So Google was doing their thing. YouTube was doing their thing. Google said, you know what? I see an opportunity. We can help them. They can help us. Let's collaborate. Same way kind of Facebook and Instagram did, right? They collaborated. All right, I'm on Instagram on my phone. I'm on Facebook on my computer. All one program, all one episode, Life and Basketball. But guess what? It's all under one business, Zuckerberg. But Google owns YouTube, right? Do, do people understand it? If you have a, a Gmail account, then you have a YouTube account. A lot of people don't understand that. So they're giving you a package. We're going to help you put, put things together. And we're going to give you lots of value. See, when you collaborate with people, you can bring tons of value to them more than what you can bring to yourself. Or more than you can bring yourself. Let's just say that I'm a electrician. I can come over to your house. You want your whole house rewired. Actually, true story. A buddy of mine, electrician. Well, I'm going to come over there. I'm going to take care of, you know, I had a short or something, right, when I first moved in my house. I'm going to come over there and fix it. It got to be too much for him. I said, I'm going to be back. I'm going to come back tomorrow. I'm going to bring my buddy and his son with me because we collaborate on some big jobs that we can't do on our own. And they came and knocked it out and did more than I expected them to do. All right. So he was able to collaborate. I derail. People might know him really rare of you, you know, if you like, real close to me know who I'm talking about otherwise, right, is, you know, does great electricity work, all right? Now, see what I just did? And I'm going to tag them in this comment or in this post, you know, 32, 45, about, that's what my time say, um, like 33 minutes, right? I, I, I have no problem helping out another business person, right, because at some point, Maybe we can find a way for my companies or what I do to collaborate with his companies or, you know, each one teach one. If we're not helping out someone else, how can we get help? So I have no problem telling you that he's an electrician. I was giving you the story. It got too much for him, right, to do by himself. But he had no problem collaborating with some other electricians to be able to get the job done. And they did more than what I expected them to do. And be and was able to get the job done. I haven't had no problems out of that part of the electrical system since. So who are we willing to collaborate with to get business done? Again, we're scared, right? We're jealous, cold hearted, or you know, just don't want to help nobody. But we want all the help. Well, if I can help you and you can help me, but together we can help many more people by not collaborate. That's what good leaders do. That's what winners do. That's what successful businesses do. Successful leaders do. So when you talk about pyramid of success, right? What are your foundations in that pyramid? that you're looking at is going to take you to a whole different level of success. Same way on the basketball court. You know, can you collaborate with good coaches? Can players collaborate? We talk about players collaborating with each other, but can coaches collaborate with each other? If I'm the smartest coach on my staff, 
I need a whole new staff. Plain and simple. If you're the smartest person in your circle, you need a new circle. That's what it amounts to. So, you know, those are basically my three points today, man. Um, if anybody got any questions, you know, uh, drop them in the link. Um, I always ask that we get really no participation. And, you know, the way that I flow sometimes is, 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 is I flow better on, like, questions and to be able to go off of, of you know, things that people may want to know and we talk about them and, you know, again, collaborating. I don't need you to do my show for me because I got my content. But there's no way that you can help others if others don't get tell you what they need help on or what they might want to talk about. But with that being said, I'm going to say it again. This is the book you need in your life. If you want to be a successful leader, if you want to be a successful coach, this book ain't talking about making a layup. This book ain't talking about doing a three-man weave. This book ain't talking about running no set play. That's not what this book is about. This book here is about becoming an effective leader in life. Hold it up here so both can see it. I'm going to drop the link one more time. All right. Share it. Share this Facebook Live. Share this episode of Life in Basketball with someone. But better yet, go cop the book. Go cop the book. It's going to help you. It's going to help somebody else. Trust me. 1999, do you some justice. And when I do write the book, when I, when I do write the book that talks about basketball, and I've already told y'all, time for humbleness is kind of, you know, going out the door. Because I'm confident. I'm confident. And I'm humble, but that don't mean I have to be reserved. When I when I drop the book about coaching, it's gonna make a lot of people look at the dudes that they've been that's been training them or coaching them and be like, ah, I've been bamboozled. Or they gonna say, Hey, this just don't make no sense to me. I don't understand it. What is he talking about? And that's gonna be because they're going to be exposed to something that they've never been exposed to before. They're going to be like, man, what the hell is he talking about? I ain't never heard that. So, with that said, I'm out. No questions. That's cool. I'll see y'all on Thursday for episode six. Got two more episodes. Two more episodes of life and basketball um, before I move on to something else bigger and better. All right. Um, after eight episodes, life and basketball will probably continue um, maybe once a week instead of twice a week. I wanted to run eight shows because there's eight chapters in the book. All right. For those that don't know, I'm going to let you see them. All right, here are the chapters, IG, Facebook, all right? There's eight chapters in the book, so I said I was going to have eight shows. Um, after that, then I'm probably go to a show once a week. Um, so if don't nobody have any questions, all right, you can visit me at blesstheballsd.com. Put your kid with me. Put your nephew, put your niece with me, and let's go from there. Oh, I'm having a, I haven't put it out yet, but it will be out this evening for everybody. But y'all that's on the show, get first crack at it. I'm, I'm having a father-son. I'm having a father-son basketball camp for Father's Day. 
I'm having a one day father son basketball cap for Father's Day. All right, we got three packages. It's going to be dope. All right, I got three different packages. You just want to come and learn. You come and learn. You want to come and get some value. Come get some value. You want to come get some learn, get value, and get something to remember the occasion by. That's what you want to do. All right, may do like age six to 16. Um, unless I get feedback from some older guys, college guys, whatever, that may want to come with their dads, but father and son, first ever Father's Day basketball cap, ran by Bless the Ball, is going to be epic. All right? So the people that you know, if you in the Chicago land or not, all right, I want you to let the people that you know that have kids all right, and it's not even it's not just a father and son, okay, but father and father and child, because some fathers don't have sons, right? I'm blessed, my son five months old right now, but I got two daughters that are older, so that means that would have excluded me, but my oldest daughter played basketball, so father and child. So if somebody got a daughter, got a son, all right, they can bring them out, have good bonding time. Hell, if, if somebody got a niece, nephew, and they act like father figure, you know, they can bring them out too. Cousin, whatever. But it's going to be epic. So call somebody that you know, right? Well, share this video first and then they'll hear it. But call somebody that you know, let them know, you know, that they need to be a part of this camp. Father and child camp. All right. Uh, you know, we talked about collaboration. I don't know what Zuckerberg going to do with IG. You know, you can't share the live. You can't replay the live. You can't do nothing with the live. All right. So IG, those that's on, you know, uh, Surreal, what up, kid? Um, I think that's Jeremiah and Lil Sean. Um, what up? Y'all, um, you can go over to Facebook so you can share it, all right? Uh, but the people that's that's on Facebook, you know, Facebook Live don't let me see who's all on Facebook. I don't know why they do that. Sometimes they'll show you all the people on. Sometimes they won't, but once you finish, they'll show you. But whoever's on, go share this, all right, so that people can find out what we talked about, Pyramid of Success and Collaboration, but also so that they know about the father-child basketball camp. All right, be transparent with your kids. Show them, hey, I used to get out here and do some of these things. I may not be Michael Jordan, LeBron James, Steph Curry, but we can interact in a, you know, physical fitness type of way. And, you know, I can show you that I can do some of those things also that you like to do. And I can kind of come down to your level and we can collaborate and work together. All right. So with that being said, I'm out. See y'all Thursday. Peace.